Ladies and gentlemen, it's one minute past ten. It's Monday. It's absolutely freezing in here. The uh, heating has stopped working uh, completely. Uh, I don't know what's going on. It. Uh, I can't find anyone to talk to about it. I'm just going to have to suffer through the bitter cold like some sort of Soviet winter. The fake spring is gone. That week of fake spring, the the red herring of spring, the, the cocktease of spring, it's gone. See you later. Forget about it. It's, it's, it's no use to anyone anymore. Winter is back like the cruel bitch that it is. Storm Freya is on the way. Doesn't bear thinking about it. It's truly terrible, truly terrifying, truly harrowing. But luckily, luckily for us, we have two things that will stand us in good stead for the apocalypse. Ladies and gentlemen, we've got coffee and memes. Steady job and a couple extra potatoes. That's all I want. You're getting on. You're pushing 30, Sluggy. You know, it's time to think about getting some ambition. Oh. I always figured I'd live a little bit longer without it. Don't forget, kid, that what you're trying to do here is to be bright and chipper and entertaining and, and intelligent and sort of glitzy, and that's funny, and it's, it's, it's kind of cool, and it's interesting, and it's edgy, and all of that. It, it puts that facade of momentary charisma on you, and if you don't play that out, you actually fail. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Coffee and Memes. Welcome to Threshold.fm. <clears throat> welcome to my life. I'm here to discuss it in detail, in depth, in all of its gory details, warts and all. Uh, really tease apart the uh, nuances of my very existence live on air for your entertainment. Uh, Wesley Snips is here, my psychic sidekick. He knows stuff. He can read your thoughts. He can make you do things. <laughs> things that you can never imagine do. It can make you feel in certain ways. I don't know. Lobsters. Listen, it's Monday. It's fine. It's going to be okay. We've got, another, we've got a whole week of this left, all right? So if we all pull together, you know, we all just get behind the, get behind the mule, so to speak. Get our heads down. Keep your, your head down, your ear to the ground, your nose to the grindstone. Pull your socks up, pipe down, put your foot in the door, um, stick your finger in the dike. No, hold on a second. I don't know. Listen, I've got a bloody great, decent... Oh, God, I know I've got a bag of shoe thrives today. That Mephius remix album's done come out on Friday. That's got some naughty bits on it. Got the Camo and Crooked remix of Pivot. Uh, Gigantor remix of Work It. And Calyx of TB remix of Fractured. Hello. Uh, Slap 2019 by Neon Light, Odd One by Proxima, Undertow by Reflector, ne another couple of other bits by Circuits off that AP. Uh, Bun Bunshin, Clueless by Bunshin, Black Owl spelt with a four. Uh, break remix of Calyx and TB. Yep, uh, another br uh, break remix of Technomatic as well. Break just doing work at the moment, just doing work. Pfft, ridiculous. Hey, got some bloody good fun news today. A lot of Florida man action. A lot of Florida man action. Not just one story, but 11. They have, cause someone, have comp uh, someone has compiled, who did it? Uh, uh, they are called, oh, the Miami Herald, no less. I mean, they would know. They've compiled their top 10 Florida man stories, and there are some whoppers in there. Uh, and also another fresh one uh, from three days ago. Florida man who allegedly threatened family with Coldplay lyrics ends standoff after SWAT promises him pizza. Uh, this is, oh man, he looks like a real wrong one. He, uh, yeah. God, I mean, what? <sighs> what? Can you imagine being threatened by him with Coldplay lyrics? Like he's just staring at you. And it was all yellow. Uh, do you want some pizza? Yeah, all right. Thanks. Cheers. Doesn't bear thinking about, does it? I mean, I guess it could be worse. It could be, it could be the killers. Are the killers worse than Coldplay? It's not good either way. It's like, oh, Nazism, communism, which one is well done? Both, both pretty bad. 
Uh, what else have we got? Uh, right, come on. Um, Planet Nine is a real thing, and it's lurking ominously at the edge of our solar system, scientists claim. Jasper Hamill reports on that. It's got 15 shares, so that's that's pretty cool, isn't it, for a Monday? Runaway Soviet spaceship will crash into the surface of the Earth this year. I think we might get into this guy who feeds his leg uh, to some of his mates. Um, he has a leg. He had some sort of accident, I think, has caused like the bottom half of one of his legs to just, like, a mess. Couldn't be saved. Doctors had to chop it off. Uh, he said, can I keep it? And he went, uh, why? It's mine, isn't it? I guess. Yeah. Ye yeah, all right. Yeah, you, you, you can. You can keep it. Yeah. And I think there are no laws on the book currently in England about eating your own legs if they've been removed. Um, but then he gets some, some mates round and they're like, I'll have a go on it. Is it any good? Like, well, let's make tacos out of it and find out. Oh, God, it makes me feel sick just thinking about it. Uh, TripAdvisor review na reviewer named UK's most feared after hundreds of bad reviews. He sounds like a prick. Uh, the legalisation of weed has a very expected consequence uh, on junk food sales. Uh, economists discover. Um, what else have we got? Oh, yeah, you can get a testicle-flavoured beer. So that's the thing. Archaeologists find 1,800-year-old wall carving of a penis, and it is the... Well, look, here it is. I mean, I don't know how much more there is to it than this, but that is the classic cock. Classic. I mean, sad, very sadly, it doesn't have the urethra at the end, and there are no lines of jizz coming out of the end. No hairs on the balls. No hair on the balls either. That's a concern. That could be a child's penis, and that's not cool. Okay, it's very important when you're drawing the classic cock to make sure you add hairs to the balls to at least insinuate that the penis is of legal age. Okay, just putting that out there. Christ, it's Monday morning and it pains me to have to get into this shit already. A um, bit more news about the jogger who um, uh, got attacked by the mountain lion and strangled it to death. Turns out it was actually a kitten. <laughs> uh, no, it wasn't a kitten. It was only like a three-month-old mountain lion. But... Um, as it turns out, a three-month-old mountain lion it does weigh about 20, 25 kilos, which is like the size of a very large Staffordshire Bull Terrier. And so if you imagine whether or not you could... Do you think you could win a fight uh, with a very angry Staffordshire Bull Terrier? Probably not. Uh, what about one with bigger claws and bigger teeth like a mountain lion might have? They're, they're, they're really... Um, Bit of a red herring here from uh, Lab Bible. They uh, Here's the picture that they've posted attached to it. Like... That that little guy, he ain't attacking anyone. That is about a three week old lion cub. That or it's that <laughs> it's, that's really pulling on the heartstrings. He, the jogger did not get like. Look at the geezer's face. Look at it. He is like he's had a rough time there. That is something that can easily do that. People in the comments are like, hey, oh, look, I've seen small mountain lions. He obviously picked it up for a, to take a selfie with it. That's why it got him on the face. I mean, it's possible, isn't it? Don't know. Maybe that's the story. He found like a he found like a little a little baby mountain lion that had got lost. It's got separated from his family. It was like me, me, oh no. And he's like, oh, look at you little fella. Oh, I'll just pick you up and take a selfie with you. Oh, let's look at this little fella. Ah, oh, my face! Ah, oh, kill it! Get it with the sticks. Ah, oh, the sticks are breaking. Kneel on its face. Oh God. Oh Lord of sweet mercy. Uh, yeah. That is, that is, I don't even think that's a mountain lion. I think that that's an actual lion. Fake news. Fake news from Lab Bible as per usual. Anything else we've got here? What have we got? Uh, oh, yeah. US offers a million dollar reward for Osama bin Laden's son, Hamza. So, lads, lo lobster crew, you know, lads and lasses, you know, if, if you fancy forming some sort of militia and we could go out and try and get him, that, that money could go towards the app. You know, I, I could shut down the Patreon at that point if we had a million dollars just from um, finding Bin Laden's son, bring him back, drag him back, put him, uh, I don't know, frog him, put him in the back of a car and uh, collect that sweet, sweet moolah. So unless we've got anything better to do, we might as well turn into bounty hunters. We could do the whole dog the bounty hunter routine. We'll get him in the back of like an SUV, got him handcraft, but give him a cig. You know, I say, hey, come on, brother, what happened? Come on, why, 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 do you fit, why, why do you need to join Al-Qaeda, brother? Come on, what's with the whole terrorism routine, brother? Hey, come on, look, you can clean up, we'll help you out, brother. 
Come on, brother. Do you want another cig? Brother? Hey, do you want us to toss you off? Brother? Whoa, hold, hold on a second. It's taking a turn. Yeah, so he's out there. He's just, you know, he's doing his stuff and that in it. But, you know, he's a naughty boy. So you got to go and get him, haven't you? you got to go and get a naughty boy. Right, look. Let's uh, play some music. Um, what have we got? Oh, God, there's a lot of good stuff. Got loads of good stuff. Let's, okay, this break remix of Technomatic. The track's called Bristol. It's a hot bit. Mm, you're listening to Morning Jazz on Threshold Data Firm. Mm-hmm. Coffee and jazz. in the chat that Bin Laden's son is a CIA informant and a KGB informer. Woo! He's a triple agent. He's a bad, bad boy. For all the massive and crew inside, making a noise, bringing down some Bristol flavour. Listen it! Listen it. This is the break remix of Bristol by Technomatic. Pulling out one up for all the massive and crew inside, making a noise, bringing down some Bristol flavor. Listen it. Hold tight, all those watching on the Facebook stream. YouTube stream, threshold stream, okay. If you're watching on Facebook, don't be shy about smashing that share button. We're doing the Lord's work out here. Mm-hmm. Choice bit. Fine work, Mr. Break. Oh, uh, Mr. Break with this freestyle remix, so I really spoiling us. However, can we repay you? Oh, cash. Okay, it's fine, sure, no problem. 
Yeah. Break remix of Bristol by Technomatic is on technique, I believe. Hmm. Oh, no. Oh, I'm questioning myself now. Yeah, probably. No, it's not. It's on Shogun. <laughs> Florida man who allegedly threatened family with Coldplay lyrics and stand off with SWAT after they promise him pizza. Good boy. Lobsters. Good boy for ending the standoff. Anyway, shame to have got to that point in the first place, though. Not a main. Here he is. He's a naughty boy. Um, he looks a bit too old to be Tide Poddy. Should old enough to know better, I guess. Although maybe all them Tide Pods have aged him. It's possible. It's possible. A Florida man accused of threatening his family by texting them cold play lyrics <laughs> and warning them of retribution from his Nazi prison associates. Less funny. Uh, was uh, persuaded by police to end a standoff in return for a fresh slice of pizza. Reports say Evan Charles uh, McLemore, McLemore, under the belief that SWAT team negotiators were ready to hand him one of America's favourite foods, was taken into custody Tuesday following a four-hour con- uh, confrontation uh, at a Pensacola home. I hope they gave him the pizza. What a jip. What an absolute jip. You've had a four-hour standoff. You're like, all right, I'll do it for the pizza. I'll I'll, I'll give it up for the pizza. They don't give you the pizza. Pfft. Ridiculous. Never underestimate the power of pizza with flavoured crust, said the Pensacola Police Department. Oh they, oh, they wrote it on Facebook, did they? More sassy social media action from the police. Pfft. At least they got him, yeah? At least they got the crim, yeah? Okay, I, th- I think there should be a new rule for police and their social media output. You're only allowed to make sassy remarks on your, fa- on your police Facebook and Twitter if you've actually caught a criminal. And then you can make humorous puns, I don't know, memes... Uh, funny use of emojis, um, like sassy gifs, all that sort of stuff. You're only allowed to do it when you've actually booked the felon. Okay, that's 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 the rule now. Okay, cops. I know we have a lot of cops listening, and I appreciate the good work that you do. I know you're not paid enough. I know it's stressful. I know it's dangerous. You do a good job of keeping us most of us safe at night, and you know all of that. You ain't got it easy. You ain't got an easy life. But listen, guys, this sassy social media routine. It's got to stop, unless you've got the crims, okay? That's the new rules, okay? And, um, yeah, thanks. Uh, it was not immediately clear if responding officers even gave... Oh, Jesus, here we go. This is this is a disgrace. Um, McLemore, McLemore, a slice. But they did deliver him charges of resisting an officer uh, without violence and aggravated stalking, according to the Pensacola News Journal. I want to know more about this whole... Cold... Oh, look, he's... Look, here he is. Look, this is the SWAT team. They do have a pizza there, so it's maybe they didn't. They was oh god, that would be annoying if they even had the pizza there and you, you smell its pizzery goodness and you come out get your slice as they promise you. Boom, in cuffs, off to the neck. The newspaper says the incident unfolded after police initially responded to a call about a possible battery, and reportedly learned McLemore. Uh, I'm going to pronounce that differently every single time I read it. Um, McLemore had barricaded himself inside a room at the home. The suspect, it added, had called out that he had a gun to his head and he was not going back to prison no matter what it took. Uh, that sounds rough. After numerous attempts to lure uh, McLemore out of the room, prove unsuccessful, SWAT called him and they called in the big guns the promise of a pizza. Prior to his arrest, McLemore <laughs> was wanted by police for aggravated stalking. Uh, the Pensacola News Journal reported, uh, with his stepmother claiming in February that he held a knife to his grandmother's throat and threatened to kill her. He sounds like a bad, bad boy. That's no fun at all. Uh, an arrest report viewed by the Pensacola News Journal said that um, McClaymore has previously threatened to harm people by telling them that his Nazi associates from prison would pay them a visit. Oh, no, 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 no. Uh, Mock Le Mears family eventually cut off communications with him, uh, but not before he sent them one text with Coldplay lyrics, Lights will guide you home and ignite your bones, and I will try and fix you. Yeah, I guess contextualised like that, it's actually pretty terrifying. It's a bit sort of Ed Gein, isn't it? The report said the lyrics from the song Fix You were meant uh, by the band to be uplifting, though it's unclear how McLemore has meant them. Yeah, not nicely, I imagine. Police records say uh, McLemore has served an 18-month prison term for battery on a person over the age of 65. Oh, God. His bond has been set at 100 grand. 
Uh, anyway, that's rough on all counts. Rough for uh, matey boy. Uh, it's obviously in a bad way. Rough that he's beating up old people and rough that he didn't get his pizza and rough that the police are effectively conning people with pizza. I think that's, that is not on. Absolutely. I mean, it's just a rough story all around, isn't it? Right, look, shall we just get into this um, top 10... Um, Top 10 Florida man stories. That's that haircut there. Very tired poddy. Very, very tired poddy. Oh, look at him. Uh, bless him in a way, I guess. But yeah, very tired poddy. Right, in at number 10. This is compiled by the Miami Herald. So you know it's legit, right? At number 10, Florida man fires muskets at cars on the Seven Bridge in the Florida Keys. He was dressed as a pirate at the time. And July 2015, Monroe County deputies said... Uh, They also said that James Sperring uh, wasn't using real ammo. Rather, it was black powder rounds. Uh, He played a costumed pirate as part of his profession at the time. So that's a sort of, um, a bit like Michael Douglas in Falling Down, but rather than wearing the sort of short sleeve shirt and tie and briefcase uh, sort of look, pirate. Yeah, very Florida-y. Number nine, Florida teen gets turned on in a Tampa Bay Walmart. Hey, we don't find anything remotely sexy about Walmart. Well, speak for yourself. But it takes all kinds. Uh, But this one enters the Florida Man Top 10 because of the details. Brooksville Police said Sean Johnson, 19. This has got to be Sean down here, hasn't it? Uh, No, that's a different one. We'll get to him in a bit. Sean Johnson, 19, undoubtedly a Tide Podder, uh, came uh, came to the store's loss prevention staffer's attention in October 2014, a loss prevention staff member. That's, that's sort of one of those narcs, isn't it? That tries to stop people nicking stuff. Uh, I, don't, I don't know not the term narc is it's quite right for them. Yeah, maybe. Uh, they just go around the store, dob people in. Uh, in 2014, because he, he plucked a stuffed toy horse off a shelf and then took it to the bedding department, where they say he masturbated using the toy. After he finished, he put the stuffed animal covered in his DNA on the bed and then back on the shelf. Very tired potty. Very, very tired potty. Uh, number eight, Florida man is released from jail on auto theft charge. He immediately breaks into another car in the jail's parking lot and is caught because a deputy was sitting behind the wheel. <sighs> the Pasco Sheriff's Office said, Clade uh, Carpuzzi, 41, too old to be a tired potter, uh, of the Newport Ritchie was marched back into the correctional facility and booked in on a second attempted auto theft charge in November 2018. That is pretty dumb. As far as dumb crimes go, being let out of jail and then going straight into the jail parking lot and attempting to break into a car that had a policeman sat in it. (sighs) That is some rookie shit. (laughs) That is some real schoolboy error. God, yeah. Okay, next one. This is a wild. This is a wild story, actually. Um, number seven, top ten Florida man, death metal musician's home festooned with flamethrowers, weapons, and ammo erupted in heavy metal fire. Uh, but that's not why Cannibal Corpse's guitarist Patrick O'Brien was arrested in December 2018. Police said the 53-year-old musician forced his way into a neighbor's house while his burned, pushed one of the occupants to the ground, and then lunged at deputies with a knife. Uh, O'Brien's bandmates told that Rolling Stone a week later that he was getting the help he needed and the band is touring with a replacement guitarist. Yeah, it um, doesn't sound the like the behaviour of a happy, healthy individual. I, yeah, hopefully he gets... It's not about stockpiling flamethrowers, though. It's not about that Not about that flamethrower stockpiling life, I'm, I'm, I'm going to say. Don't want to judge, you know. Judge a man who's obviously got his got his issues, um, but well, hopefully he does get help he needs. Uh, number in number six, a naked Florida man who danced in a fire while holding a knife, chanting in an unknown language. According to the Cape Coral Police, the man John Hennessy, twenty seven, dropped the knife and then swung a wooden stick at officers after burning himself in the fire in the front yard of his home on the afternoon of June two thousand and eighteen. Uh, police surmised he might have been on psychedelic mushrooms. Well, it's definitely a possibility, isn't it? Oh, here he is. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he was on psychedelic mushrooms. <laughs> I think we can all agree. Oh, John, John Hennessy has just gone one toke over the line, hasn't he? Bless him. <laughs> he's just look at his face. He's like, oh, I've done fucked up, didn't I? Oh, dear. These mushrooms are good, though. <laughs> these are... Oh, no. Oh, damn. I, I done goofed. I done goofed up again. <laughs> 
<laughs> Bless him. Yeah, I think we can all... Uh, uh, there's, I think there's a little bit of John Hennessy in all of us, you know. God bless him. God bless him. Oh, dear. He is still high as a motherfucker, isn't he? Yeah. Um, right, here we go. Number five. The Florida man who bit off his girlfriend's thumb during a late night run to Taco Bell. Right. Uh, Miami New Times reported that Ricardo Davis and his unnamed girlfriend, a bit sexist, uh, got into an argument on the way to the fast food restaurant in Palm Bay where the incident occurred in 2016. That's rough, man. Don't be biting people's thumbs off. That's not cool. Uh, number four. Whoever tied a 12-foot alligator to a tree with a parachute cord behind an apartment complex on the Hillsborough River uh, and feeding it cats... Jesus! Tied an alligator to a tree and fed it cats. In October 2013, Florida Fish and Wildlife Conservation Commission didn't find their Florida man. How do you know it was a man then? Eh? Eh? Could have been Florida woman. Eh? Could have been Florida non-binary. Who knows? Well, 2008, 2013, maybe not. You're probably more man or woman at that point. Uh, Conversation Commission didn't find their Florida man at the time for the gruesome animal cruelty. Uh... The Florida uh, number three, the Florida man who said he didn't remember going to a Honda of Ocala. What's a Honda of Ocala? Uh, and taking two large screen television sets, putting them in an SUV on the showroom floor, driving th- through the dealership's glass doors, crashing into another vehicle, or abandoning the SUV at the entrance of the subdivision. Right. Okay. So hold on a second. Let's just get this straight. He went to Honda of Ocala, whatever that might be. Uh, and took two large screen television sets, put them into an SUV on the showroom floor, drove that the said SUV through the du- glass double doors, crashed into another vehicle, abandoned said SUV, um, and you don't remember any of it. Maybe he was on some of these same mushrooms that uh, John Hennessy's been uh, gobbling. That's what the Marion County deputies at Vantis L. Bashir's 46 did in November 2015. Well, God bless him. Number two, the Deerfield Beach Reptile Store owner, Benjamin Herman Siegel, 40, who threw a bearded dragon lizard in the air, swung it around and slapped his employee with the poor critter, according to the Boward Sheriff's Office uh, arrest report. It was like something out of Game of Thrones, a former Miami Herald columnist wrote in 2015. Yeah, it's not about hitting people with lizards. Like, just leave the lizard, just leave the lizard alone, man. And uh, number one, the aforementioned Joshua James and the gator through the oh uh, yeah, and the gator through the Wendy's drive-through incident. My man, here he is, uh, Joshua James. He got a pretty reasonably sized alligator. How big was it? Like twelve, uh, three foot, about yay long. But I'd say about yay long. Three foot long alligator. He's driven up to a Wendy's drive through, slung it in through the window. <sighs> Certainly put the cat amongst the pigeons, wouldn't it? Don't know why. Just again, probably Tide Pods, isn't it? Just see, he's probably vaping a Tide Pod or um, just taking the Tide Pods and just sticking them underneath the foreskin, letting them absorb in naturally. That's one way to do it. Or shelving them. And uh, yeah, could have been on Hennessy Boys, mushrooms. Don't know. But anyway, he's raged a bloody alligator through the wendy's drive through window 23 year old jupiter man what jupiter recall james as the 23 year old jupiter man oh he's an alien okay well surely the story here is i mean i know the alligator through the window routine is pretty sensational and definitely newsworthy but what about the fact that he's from out of space <sighs> just a thought isn't it right okay look it's a new new tone here it's called till dawn and Andy C just do a tune called Till Dawn. Yep, Andy C also done the tune called Till Dawn, but this is Till Dawn by Newtone off the Future History EP on Le Hôpital Records. You can make up your mind whether or not you think it's better than Till Dawn by Andy C. You decide.
messaged in saying that Jim Carrey is a big death metal fan. He's also a socialism fan, though, so, you know, swings and roundabouts, I guess. Uh, he's just a cheeky millionaire socialist. Greg Haynes on Facebook is saying, can someone hook me up with the SoundCloud podcast link for the show? Uh, yeah, I haven't been posting the shows on SoundCloud recently, mainly because I hate SoundCloud. Uh, but if you go to, you can get it on Spotify, you can get it on iTunes, Apple Podcasts, you can get it on Stitcher, you can get it on YouTube. And very soon you'll be able to get it in the archive of the brand new Threshold.fm iPhone and Android app. Oh, shit. Those vocals are my man Mike Russell, who I knew in Berlin. Fine old jazz cat from Washington DC. Who's done some vocals on Tiger Lights, Vital Vocals, uh, Stop Back. Actually, that might be out on Soul Rush. Yeah, he's a good old boy. Till Dawn by New Tone. It's a fine slice. I'm keen on that. I'm into it. I'm fine with it. It's it's absolutely yep. Literally no red marks on that from me. That's that that's a pass. A plus. Well done. The legalization of weed has a very expected effect on junk food sales. Economists economists discover. Uh, Jasper Hamill here. He's got 37 shares. Not bad. 
uh, an academic has finally proved that cannabis gives you the munchies after discovering that legalizing weed uh, prompts a huge increase in junk food sales. The university in Connecticut says there may be something more substantial to the urban myth, which states that marijuana makes stoners go on epic junk food binge, consuming mass quantities of their chips, cookies, and to whatever the high-calorie salt or sugar-laden snacks on that they can get. Weird accent, man. Weird accent. Um, Michelle Baggio, assistant professor of uh, economics, conducted a study which found a link between the legalization of the ganja herb and increased consumption of certain high-calorie foods. Um, She looked at data on monthly purchases of cookies, chips, and ice cream from shops in more than 2,000 counties in the United States over a 10-year period. Her analysis showed that the legalization of recreational marijuana ganja herb in states like Colorado, Oregon, and Washington led to a 3.1 increase in ice cream purchases, 4.1 increase in cookie purchases, and 5.3 increase in crisp purchases soon after weed was made legal, uh, illegally available to buy. This might seem like small numbers, said Baggio, but they're statistically significant and economically significant as well. I'm not an advocate for legaliz- I'm not an advocate for legalization or not. What? I'm not an advocate for legalization or not. I'm right. Well, you ambivalent. Okay. I'm just interested in whether or not there are unintended consequences of the policy. Right. Well, cool. Does weed give stoners the munchie? Uh, the Metro ask. Sorry, man, what was the question again? No, the munchies are not a real phenomenon. Or yes, cannabis turns people into ravenous snack hounds. Uh, Sorry, man, what's the question again? Uh, 71% are going with yes on that. uh, 9% no. Not sure what they're basing that on. No, it's just an open myth. No, no, sorry. No, oh, actually, uh, actually, cannabis does not give you the munchies. Uh, are you talking about indica or st- stevia or what? What's the, uh, yup, yup, don't know, yup, 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 yup. Jesus Christ, it makes me sick, makes me sick. Uh, what else have we got here? Oh, uh, yeah, they're offering a million quid to uh, go and get Bin Laden's boy. He's a naughty boy. Got to bring him back, haven't they? Got to say, sorry, you're too naughty. Got to come, got to come home, haven't you? Got to come home. All right, let's do archaeological penis. Archaeologists find 1,800-year-old wall penis. Uh, Historical researchers have found an 1,800-year-old wall carving depicting a cock and balls, showing that really, fellas never change. Boys will be boys, will be boys, will be boys, will be boys, as they say. Archaeologists from Newcastle University and Historic England discovered a number of carvings in a quarry near Hadrian's Wall, Cumbria. I want to build that wall back up, keep the scotch out. Damn right. It's build, build a wall. Build a wall. Um, Come here believed to have been made by Roman soldiers back in 207 AD. According to the historic England, the phallus is a Roman symbol for good luck. <laughs> oh, lovely stuff. Things have gone downhill for penises uh, since then, but maybe we could try and bring that back. The, the cuck is just a symbol for good luck. Good luck and uh, happy hunting and happy camping. And happy happy wife, happy life. I don't know. Uh, it was a symbol for good luck so that you can tell your mates next time you draw one on his face while he falls asleep at <laughs> a party, they're going to get good luck. It wasn't all willies, though. The team also found a number of other important carvings, uh, including an inscription which read, uh, Apro et Maximo Consflibs Officina uh, Merchanti, which translates to DJ Gov Invent a Jump Up. Oh, how about that? And uh, no, it's in reference to the consulate of Aper and Maximus and a Roman bust. I oh, know. The inscriptions help give historians an insight into the lives of Roman soldiers, who it turns out were pretty similar to a lot of men today. Right? In in what way? That they were men? Yeah, I don't think the species has changed or the gender has changed too much in 1800 years, but go on. Uh, to find such details is rare, uh, with just a handful of such sites in the whole of England, according to Historic England. Mike Collins, who works as a Hadrian's Wall, eight, works as the Hadrian's Wall Ancient Monuments Inspector for Historic England, said in a statement. These inscriptions at Gelt Forest are probably the most important on the Hadrian's Wall frontier. Good to know that a classic cock drawing is one of the most important inscriptions. <laughs> that big Mikey Collins from the uh, from Historic England uh, has found. Uh, they're posting it there. 
This phallus is a Roman symbol meaning good luck. I just think they're having a laugh, aren't they? They provide insight into the organisation of the vast construction project that Hadrian's Wall was, as well as some very human and personal touches. I, for one, believe we should rebuild Hadrian's Wall as the Scotch just simply aren't sending their best. (laughs) Bloody hell. Easy (laughs) target. The team of experts will now use ropes to get into the quarry uh, where they can utilise laser scanning technology to get detailed recordings of the markings. Thanks Thanks to advancements in technology... They'll be able to create three-dimensional penises on a three-dimensional digital models, meaning that people can look at the carvings for years to come. Well, that is lovely stuff. Uh, The inscriptions are very vulnerable to further gradual decay. I could just go up and slap another one on there if you like. No, honestly, gratis. I'll pay for my own travel as well if you want. Honestly, I don't mind. I could... It's great content, isn't it? Great social media content. Um... Right, come on, let's have a few more bits. What have we got? Oh, it might as well... Oh, yeah, uh, no, probably not two break remixes in the show. Otherwise, I tend to do a little break heavy. Let's have this uh, Dead Groove by Black Owl, spelt with a four. This is a naughty bit. Oh no, I've upset the Scotch. Sorry, Chode. I'm actually of Scottish descent. Ranking, well, ranking, formerly muck ranking.
Uh, Dead Grief by Black Owl spelt with a four that is an absolute belter yeah I'm into that Black Owl spelt with a four doing work these days putting the hours in stacking those peas they're getting that bread they are gaining that grain (sighs) no mistake right come on let's do it I've been threatening this for weeks now this guy served his friends tacos made from his own amputated leg uh, one of <laughs> one friend had to spit me into a napkin. He says, "This is so gross. Like, uh, yeah, this is not for the faint-hearted. I'm just putting this out there. This has pictures of severed of amputated legs. It has pictures of cooked human flesh, and um, it's actually very light-hearted though in terms of the actual like. Uh, uh, <laughs> it's just the guy sounds like a bit of a lad, shall we say." Okay, you could taste human flesh in a, if you could taste human flesh in an ethical way, would you? It's the kind of question you ask after watching Silence of the Lambs stoned. No matter how you respond, you never expect anyone to hold you to your answer. But in a recent Reddit post, user incredibly shiny shart <laughs> shared, the, shared the story of a motorcycle crash that put him face to face with the macabre hypothetical. When a car hit his bike and sent him careening into a nearby forest, his foot was shattered to the point that he would never be able to walk again. The doctors asked if he wanted to amputate. His one question question was, can I keep it? All right. The doctor said yes. On Sunday, the 10th of July, 2016, three weeks after the accident, Shiny, who prefers to remain anonymous, (laughs) invited 10 of his most open-minded friends to a special brunch. They ate apple strudel, a (laughs) quick... Quiche, quiche puff pastries, uh, fruit tarts, and chocolate cake. They drank gin lemonade punch and mimosas. And then the main course came out. Fajita tacos made from shiny severed human limb. <laughs> the United States doesn't have a federal law banning can- cannibalism. Oh, it's in America. I thought it was in the UK. Idaho is the only state in which the simple act of eating flesh can land you in prison. Laws against murder, buying and selling human meat, and corpse, de- corpse desecration make cam- cannibalism difficult, but technically legal in other 49 states. It's rare, uh, it's rare someone able to consent to being eaten meets someone interested in eating them, but even that scenario raises a ton of ethical questions. I don't think there's much to do with the ethics. of. Uh, I don't think there are many ethical questions raised by by this particular situation but you know what do i know i make jokes about dicks and sex robots every morning on an internet radio station so yeah (laughs) Uh, a belgian man named uh, detlev gunzel was sentenced to eight and a half years in prison for butchering and eating a polish businessman with his consent yeah there's been a few things to that that's pretty pretty weird shinies uh, is the rare case where cannibalism is not only legal but ethical. Oh, so Vice are in agreement about the ethics of this. That's good to know that for once my ethics have aligned with Vice magazine. He documented the entire process, but due to the graphic nature of the photo, we have omitted several from the post. You can see the full set here. Um, don't want to get pulled from YouTube. Um, all right, well, no, there's some pretty... Oh, look, I'll post it in the Discord afterwards. We asked the 38-year-old why he decided to feed himself to his friends and what he tasted like and how the experience changed him. The following interview has been edited and condensed for length and clarity. Okay, good to know. It's it's quite long. 
I mean, maybe we'll just have, are there any let's get into any high points. God, oh look, it's got look, there it is. It kind of makes me want to be sick. Oh look. Oh no. The thing is that leg has been on ice for like three weeks before I just you know, you want to make sure your legs are as fresh as possible. Ah, oh, look, so there's the amputated uh Oh man, that's some serious swelling's gone on there, hasn't it? That is pretty pretty rotten. Okay. Um Vice, why did you do this? <laughs> Shiny. Originally I wanted to have it taxidermied or freeze dried. How cool would it be to have my freeze dried or taxidermied foot standing in the house as a lamp or a doorstop or something? All of this came out of the idea that it's my foot and I'm not gonna be cremated and checked I'm not gonna have it cremated and chucked into a landfill. It's part of me, I want it back. How did you convince the doctor to give you your leg? Most hospitals have policies where they will release your body parts to you because of some uh, religions where you have to be buried whole. So I just signed the paperwork. My mum, who was helping me get back on my feet, so to speak, drove me back to pick it up. She doesn't know I ate it, though. I went inside and the hospital gave me the foot in a red plastic bio waste bag. I brought it to the car and immediately put it in a cooler. It was pretty bizarre. Why, why, how did you spin that to your mum that you wanted to keep it? Like, what do you think you're going to do with it? I mean, how long can you keep it for reasonably? Oh, well, you presumably told you you were going to get it taxidermied. Okay. <sighs> how did you preserve it before the meal? I got it back to my place and I froze it. I couldn't find a taxidermist who would take me seriously. And freeze drying was too expensive. Uh, <laughs> it would have been $1,200 to freeze dry the thing. If I had the money, I would have done it. Eventually, I decided to cast it in plaster and use it as a doorstop. Uh, and then capture a 3D rendering so I can make a little key change. <laughs> This guy doesn't give a fuck. <laughs> when we got back to my house, I took the foot out and it was so gross, man. It was covered in blood and had iodine all over it. I'd cleaned it off. I was pleasantly surprised how well preserved it was. Uh, it's not like they preserved it in formaldehyde or anything. Uh, when you think about beef, which can be dry aged for months, I suppose it makes sense. I had four friends with me at the time and it was surreal. We picked it up and were playing with it. <laughs> it just didn't seem it was like a foot. <laughs> I want to go to a party with this like They sound like a riot. I could think, yep, that's my foot right there. But there was some part deep uh, deep in me that felt weirded out by it. That it wasn't... But in fact, that wasn't the weirdest part. Was that it, The weirdest part was that it wasn't weird. How did you prepare the foot to be eaten? Before we cast it, I quickly took a knife from the kitchen and cut a chunk off the top of my shin. Blech. The skin was already kind of off it from the surgery, leaving a big chunk of muscle exposed. I just took the muscle. <laughs> this really makes me feel ill. I just took the muscle, put it in a plastic bag, and put it in my freezer. You know the scene in National Lampoon's Family Vacation where Chevy Chase is just saying, "This is crazy. This is crazy. This is crazy." That's how I felt. I thought, "This is probably the weird, the peak weirdness of my life." I hope it doesn't get weirder than this. After we cast the leg, I took a bunch of pictures, put it in a box of flowers, and cremated it. Right, I. Um, how did you convince 10 friends to eat the foot with you? I invited 11 people. I said something like, remember how we always talked about how if you ever had the chance to ethically eat human meat, would you? Well, I'm calling you, I'm calling you on that. Uh, we do, are we doing this or what? 10 said yes. I guess we're a weird group. There were several different friend groups involved. I approached one group with the idea and they were like, totally. <laughs> because how often are you going to get the chance? One friend said she'd ask her boyfriend, a chef, if he wanted to do the cooking. Perfect. The final tally uh, was the chef and his girlfriend, my ex-girlfriend, one friend from college, two friends I'd had from a couple of years, two I'd known for over 10 years, one of their daughters who had also helped me cast the foot. It was a close group. <laughs> how did the actual cooking of the foot go down? I told the chef my idea, and after thinking about it for a couple of days, he said, OK, let's do this. I'm going to prepare it, and you guys will come over tomorrow. He marinated it overnight and sautéed it with onions, peppers, salt and pepper and lime juice. Then he served it in corn tortillas with tomatillo sauce. Read the full recipe transcribed by the chef here. Oh, it's good. I'll get into that later. Here's the most obvious but necessary question. How did it taste? Please tell me it tasted like uh, chicken. Everyone says it tastes like chicken. Uh... People think it tastes like pork because in the movies we hear it called long pig. But the term originated from a place in Papua New Guinea where they would eat wild boar. They're eat, not eating our big fat domesticated pigs that have white meat. Boars don't have white meat. They just don't. Okay. I remember eating a heritage pig and it was some of the reddest, most flavorful meat I'd ever had. It was almost like venison. And I think it was more akin to that. Okay. Uh, the particular cut was super beefy. 
Uh, it had a very pronounced beefy flavour to it. The muscle I'd cut was tough and chewy. It tasted good, but the experience wasn't the best. <laughs> you said on Reddit, one friend had to spit me into a napkin. What was the rest of the meal like? Uh, <laughs> there was this queasy anticipation. We all looked at each other like, we're doing this, right? We're doing this. <laughs> there was a very dark humour, uh, which we already have in spades. I think that that's why it went so well. They were cracking jokes the whole time. I said at one point, well, today was the day I was inside 10 of my friends at once. <laughs> I got a phone call from one of my friends the next day saying, hey, just so you know, I pooped you out. Sorry. <laughs> there was a sense that it was a bonding experience. <laughs> we could share this uh, reality, uh, share this really unique experience together. And it was a way for me to close the lid on that part of my life. Yeah, I guess if you have like a traumatic experience or you have some sort of uh, crazy thing happen to you or something, I guess eating it is a good good way to sort of move on from it. Uh, don't know. I don't know if that would actually apply to really any other circumstance. Hmm, don't know. You wrote that the meal helped you uh, give closure on the accident. What do you mean by that? It sucked the whole time, I remember, flying through the air. I remember getting hit. I remember sitting in the forest and taking off my helmet and feeling this burning pain. I looked down and my foot was hanging off. The picture of the foot all broken and mangled and dirty was on the ambulance. Uh, but I was very lucky. Uh, I think we're probably nearing the end of this, really. How has, the, the orda- uh, how has this ordeal changed the way you feel about cannibalism? It has a stigma. <laughs> It's associated with cultures that aren't perceived as civilised or situations where food, where people are forced into it to survive. They see it as barbaric, so they wonder why I would go out and do it on a whim. But people eat the placenta after a child is born. That's cannibalism. I don't see any way around it. Is that cannibalism? Because that's something... I, but it's... But the babies... Are babies cannibals until they're born? Oh, my God. Are they? No, but it's sort of the, you know, the... Hey, I'm no biologist, right? But the mum, the mummy, she has the baby in the tummy and she eats the food and then makes it into something other than it goes into the baby. So the baby is not actually necessarily eating the mummy. She's eating the food eaten by the mummy. I think that's how it works. I think you can ethically be a cannibal in certain situations. I don't have some hunger to go hunt people down and gnaw off their faces. <laughs> this was one experience where I had the chance to do something unique in a healthy and ethical manner. I did it and it was fun and cool and I have a great story. Good. I, I'm, I'm, I'm impressed. That uh, is uh, Vice back on sort of old form recently. Uh, there was an article about a man who decided to just say um, omelette de fromage for an entire day. Uh, that seems like uh, textbook Vice really from the glory days. But there you have it. Man eats own leg. Now look, to play us out, this is called Clueless by Boonshin. And for anyone listening on Facebook, you can get this as a podcast. You can get it on Spotify. You can get it on the Apple Podcast. You can get it on Stitcher. And
and you can get it on my YouTube channel, youtube.com slash high ranking. Okay, so the omelette du fromage guy uh, is responsible for classics such as fake restaurant and fake jeans at Paris Fashion Week. I haven't seen that one. Pete B says he's still got half a jar of his wife's placenta beans, if anyone's up for him. Yeah, send them in. Send them in. And Sean Simpson says he's having a kidney removed in three weeks. Uh, Lobo cook-up, guys. Yeah, I'm up for it. Although, what's wrong with the kidney? I don't know. Good luck with that, though, mate. I hope that that goes okay. Best of luck to you. Get well. That's a great record. That's Clueless by Bunshin. That's Bunshin spelt with two U's. B-U-U-N-S-H-I-N. That's a great record. I really like that. It sounds very um, signally. Um, yeah, I'm a fan. I'm a fan. Right, just leaves me time to shout out the VIP list. This is a list of very important people that are supporting the show and Threshold.fm as a whole financially. Uh, they're donating at least $10 a month or more to keep this crazy train on tracks so they get their name shouted out at the end of every show oh shit there's someone else i need to add because they signed up over the weekend and i've forgotten to add them oh no hold on i can find them don't you worry don't you worry i'll get him he's a good boy um also if you want we are developing the new threshold app 2.0 and everyone on this vip list will get their name listed as a app founder in the app. There'll be a page saying, thank you, here is a list of founders, and your name will be there. So if you want your name in the app that you can show off to all your friends down the working men's club or, you know, at your, I don't know, mum's coffee morning or your women in tech meetup or your um, show your parole officer or show your... Um, I don't know, your, your, your furries meet up or at your Mennonist meet up or at your, um, or your turfs meet up or, at your, you know, any of, the, any of your sort of meet ups that you do. And you can just basically dominate your social circles by just showing them, just asserting your dominance, basically, by showing them that your name's in the founders list on the app. Just $10, just $10 a month or more for a couple of months, get your name in the app, mate, you know, fucking decent. Can't argue with that, can you? Where is he? Come on, he's a good boy. He's coming. Oh, Lord. He's coming. He's coming. Oh, yeah, he's there. Good. Uh, this list is Oliver Hooper, Nicholas Gonclaus, Tom Ryan, Reese Moshin, Squidgy Beats, Parsons, Paulie Hutton, Kieran R., Michael Kaczynski, Matthew Tompkins, Dave Long, Joel Potter, Carl Murphy, Sam Howard, Tony J., Richard Patson, Jack Murphy, Tom Cam, Stephen Harris, Matthew Bullard, Zara Pickle, Jerome Van Thunderbart, Mike Pye, Anthony Walker, Lily Unsub, Richard Franks, Thomas Hall, Chode Ryder, Andrew Heichelbeck, John Finneson, the BDR crew, ba- Peter Blatchford, Austin Grief Cooper, Kennedy Lightfield, Ryan Glazer, James Parry, Dave Thompson, Mahendo Bartendo, Lady Squiffington, Liam the Menace Underwood, Dan Fucking Morris, a guy with no STDs, Justin. Mercer, Ames MC, uh, Josh Williams, Rob Humphrey, Shibby T, Coco Shiva, Dan Elton, Tara Wilmore, uh, Taran Wilmore, Mr. Pope, Dark Progressive Psytrance is actually superior to D&B, uh, Nicholas Lawsey, uh, Damon, uh, Damon Rayner, and Chris Brakes. What a fine... Chris Brakes literally must have got that in in about the last four seconds. Um, God bless him. Thank you so much to everyone uh, who's who's uh, offered patronage. Thank you so much to everyone that's listening. In general, I appreciate the absolute fuck out of all of you. 
Uh, those of you listening on Facebook, I'm now going to be streaming this every day on Facebook as well as on YouTube, as well as on Threshold.fm. And yeah, cheers, guys. Like, um, uh, you know, it brings me endless joy and it's lots of fun. We're talking about a lobster meet up in London at a pub called The Star in Hackney Downs at some point in the coming months. It will be a Saturday daytime. So if, you, if you're if you interested in that, or want to get a rough idea of numbers, don't know how many it would be. So join, if you're not already, join the Facebook Lobster, the Threshold Lobster Crew Facebook group or join the Discord. There is a link to the Discord in the YouTube description of this and I'll post one in the Facebook comments for this video. Get in there. There's a thread in there called Lobster Meetups and get it on there. Also, like uh, I, I mentioned a while ago, the idea of doing a like drum and bass brunch because I just think it's daytime. I just think daytime rides are a lot of fun and funny. And if we can include food and booze and all of that sort of good stuff, it would be hilarious. And a chap whose name escapes me hit me up on uh, Instagram. He's like, hey, I've got a pizza van. Just, you know, if that's of use. Like, mm, okay, all right, well, I could get in there. And someone else was like, hey, I've got a massive marquee. You know, that's a, that's the a thing. Just, you know, if anyone else has got, like, like I could get my hands on a sound system. Yeah, you know, I could find a rig. If anyone else has got something, they would be like, yeah, I'll throw this into the mix. This is an available option just for some sort of, I don't know, lobs to get together or who knows. We get enough together, we got ourselves a mini festival. That's, a, that's, that's like an interesting thing to not aim at. Or we're going to have a threshold radio road show. Who knows? Anything's possible. It's 2019. We'll put our collective heads together, crowdsource our own ridiculous... Th- I mean, we could, we could start a cult. You know, I mean, we, it's, we have the beginnings of a death cult already. You know, we get a bit of land somewhere, you know, put up on some fences, start stockpiling some weapons, that sort of thing. I don't know, just could be a goer. I'm only joking. Sort of, about the weapons stockpiling anyway. Um. Anyway, I love you all. I'll see you tomorrow morning at 10 a.m. For more coffee, more memes, more lobsters, more ridiculousness. Lobsters. I love you all. Goodbye.